Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And this is a channel bringing a real world perspective to the real world whiskey consumer. Today's first sip is going to be non-blind, a little bit of a different change of pace for us. And the reason we're doing it this way is because the folks over at Stellum and Barrel Craft Spirits sent us the Stellum Bourbon Black Label Equinox Blend mm -hmm. number one. Right up front, they did send this to us at no cost. We are under no obligation to make a review, much less a positive review. You are going to see us take the very first sip of this. We've never had this before. Never had it before. There's no familiarity with the product. We do like generally what Stellum and Barrel Craft Spirits does. So uh -huh. we are interested in this. Yeah. We have generally liked the rye a little bit more than the bourbon, even me being more of the bourbon guy. Mm -hmm. But let's get into the details on this. This is 117.26 proof. Okay, so it's got some proof. It does have some proof. And this is distilled in Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Kind of par for the course with Stellum and Barrel Craft Spirits although they do not disclose the mash bill information and percentages, something like Bardstown Bourbon Company, one of their gotcha. probably chief competitors, fair to say, uh, does do. And I definitely do like that transparency more than kind of the vagueness here, but this is the way that Stellum chooses to do it. And usually the whiskey's pretty right. good, so I'm not gonna, yeah. you know, I'm not gonna hold their prerogative. too much yeah. of an issue with that. It says this is the inaugural release of the Equinox blend and it was slowly layered in rare sets, or they slowly layered in rare sets of bourbon barrels step-by-step step until the evening of the Vernal Equinox when the blend was completed in honor of the changing seasons. Mm, cool. Sounds like some marketing jargon. At the end of the day, none of that stuff matters. Equinox does sound like a pretty cool yeah, name. it does. I will say the whiskey it has looks, a decent color to it. It looks it. nice. Not too dark, not too uh, bowling me over with, with depth and heaviness just visually speaking so maybe not too old but let's get it on the nose and find out what we're working with i get a very distinct rickhouse smell wow this smells fantastic yeah this smells so much better than i thought it was gonna smell you had low expectations it's not low expectations i my expectations are entirely based upon the bourbon barrel batches from barrel craft spirits uh. and the stellum regular bourbon that we've had and this is light years yeah. ahead of that i feel like equinox light years i just made some kind of tenuous there connection go. there this is really syrupy on the nose mm -hmm. it smells it's really rich like a rick house like an old like old oak yeah it smells old and syrupy and viscous yeah. and sweet let's, let's get it on the palate it tastes a little sharper than i expected wow. it after smelling it yeah. There's a little more sharpness in the flavor than I thought. Yeah. It is quite spicy. It's spicy it is, and it's warm. It is a spice driven pour. I honestly did not expect that much spice based on the nose. Yeah. I thought it was going to come in like a dark, rich, viscous pour. Mm -hmm. And it lit me up with a lot of black pepper spice. There's lots of black pepper. I think we need to take a second sip because yeah. we need to act. We have to act. We've acclimated yeah. now. So let's take another sip. Yeah. Here we go. Still pretty spicy. It's definitely black pepper. That's what I'm getting. Yeah, lots of black pepper, but then the depth does come through mm -hmm. underneath. You and get all the spice up front. It's warm. It's like got a little Kentucky hug yeah, going on. Yeah, big time. Kentucky, Tennessee, in, and Indiana hug. All the hugs. You're getting a, a tri-state hug <laughs> <laughs> right now. But underneath the spice, once that tamps down a little bit, it's making me salivate. It's oh, no. so, it's, it is oily, it's mm -hmm. viscous. I do wish, at least on two sips, I wish the spice was tamed down a little bit more mm -hmm. and more of that richness that's underneath it were dialed up, that it was a little bit more in balance, yep. I guess, because I think this drinks above 117 proof. I agree. I would peg this at like in the mid 120s. I'd say 123, sure. something like that. Yeah, 125, something in yeah. that ballpark range. But the flavors that you are getting are really good. Let's get into another sip. One more. Okay, that third sip. I needed that third sip. Yeah, me too. That third sip was more tame on the spice. It's still warm, but it, yeah. it, it's more balanced now. I needed, it's a three sip, it's a, it's a three sipper. You gotta have three sips before it like yeah. levels out. You really need to acclimate to this one. I'm getting a ton of brown sugar and maple syrup, black pepper, 
and that's really the backbone of this pour. You're mm -hmm. getting all your typical bourbon notes as well, your caramels, your vanillas, and then the oak that's there is nice and sweet. It is nice oak. It's not too oaky. Like yeah. it's not, it doesn't taste like a popsicle stick. Yeah, absolutely. You ready to give some scores on nose flavor and experience? I am. Hit us with it. All right, so it gets two thumbs up on the nose. Oh, wow. I very much enjoy the nose. Okay. Uh, it gets a thumbs up on flavor. It was hot, but if I'm wanting something hot and proofy, then this is a good one. No. And it gets a thumbs up on overall experience. The finish lingers. I'm getting that Kentucky hug. Again, if I'm wanting that, then this is a good one to go for. I don't always want that, but caveat, if I want that, thumbs up. Yeah. Honestly, I think I'm in the same place. Two thumbs up on the nose, easy. Yeah. It's rare it that I get a good. nose this good. It smells very good. Thumbs up on the flavor and then thumbs up on the experience. I could almost look into going two thumbs up on the experience if it were just a little bit more balanced, mm -hmm. but it is what it is. And you have like, to- It's a powerhouse pour. Yeah, you just have to know that it's a powerhouse pour. And once you've kind yeah. of wrapped your mind around yeah. that, then it's like, oh, this is exactly what I want in a powerhouse pour. Right. I just don't always want a powerhouse pour. Right, so. I'm not reaching for this when I want an easy time. I'm mm -hmm. reaching for this when I want a good time. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm wanting to be kind of knocked around a little bit, yeah. you know, slapped around a little, yeah. it is, it's a powerhouse. It, it, it drinks above its proof point, it does tons of flavor. Drink. The nose is fantastic. And let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. It does have Tennessee whiskey in the blend, almost undoubtedly George Dickel. The proof is very high. Mm. Not, not a lot of Dickel gets that high in proof. So maybe the Dickel is less. If I'm looking for it and thinking about it, I can slightly pick up on a little bit of that citrusy dickle note that's in there on the palate. I don't know. Not on the nose at all, but on the palate, it's there a little bit, but not at the forefront okay. by any means. Interesting. To me, this actually comes across probably Kentucky heavy and the spice driven Indiana components maybe at the forefront if I'm just guessing, but that's just a guess unsubstantiated. With all that said, we need to get into our real world scores. We get our real world scores by adding up the thumbs you see on the screen. There are 10 possible points available, but this is not your everyday 10 point scoring system. Nope, it's a bell curve. The four to six point range is like your average value. That's a pretty good buy in our book. Let's talk about this product, Stellum Equinox. This is a $100 or $99 MSRP okay. bottle, suggested retail price, okay. and it is a limited release. Stellum does get pretty good distribution in yeah. a lot of markets, and a lot of times it does sit on the shelf. So if you do want to find this, it's probably going to be one of the more findable limited releases. With that said, it is a limited release, so okay. once it's gone, it's gone. All right. So let's get into it. Where are you at on your real world scores for this retail consumer and real world? Okay, so for retail, honestly, $100 is a little pricey and it's limited release, so it gets a thumbs down on retail score. Yeah. However, if I was in a store and I it was in front of me, I'm going to give it a thumbs up cuz I probably would buy it just for one bottle because it's a high yeah. it's a it's a high proof like hitting bottle and it yeah. makes me like this would be one to have if you want to like blow somebody's face off but also have it be really if good if you just want to have your britches blown off yeah just, this is what you go to. but it's also good it's not just like hot for the sake of hot right yeah for me it's so, going to be oh sorry what was your real world score oh it gets a five out of ten wow. which sounds bad but it's solid in the middle yeah. which is how i feel about it because the price does hamper it for me yeah for me it's going to get a just okay on retail I could see thumbs down because it's limited and the price is up there. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit more loose with my money than you are. Yep. And to get this kind of nose and this much flavor on a hundred dollar bottle, like that's kind of the threshold that I would want to spend. But yeah. Kudos to them for keeping it under the hundred dollar mark. Yeah. I wouldn't pay a markup on it any above that personally speaking, but would I buy it at a hundred dollars? I'm thumbs up. I'm, I'm buying this. Yeah. I can't say that about all the barrel releases or all the Stellum releases. Like we have Stellum Rye, but we don't have Stellum Bourbon because we like it, but we don't love it. Mm -hmm. This is falling into that category where I would really like to have a bottle. To have a bottle at all times, at yeah. least just one. Well, just for one, yeah, not all times because it's going to go away. Oh, I wouldn't, well, yeah. I wouldn't stockpile them necessarily, but I would absolutely pick one That's of these true. up if you like big, powerful, potent, flavorful pours. Peppery, yeah, all that. Absolutely. That's going to put my real world score at a 5.5 out of 10, which I think right there solidly in the middle, kind of tipping over to the positive side. 
that's how I feel about this. Good, solid bourbon mm -hmm. for the proof point. It's just delivering a little bit more than you might expect. Yeah. And the score reflects that. To wrap things up, we usually like to speak to who this is for. I think we kind of already did that. Yeah. Like, don't buy this if you even want something that drinks 110 or 115 If you proof. want something smooth, don't get it. If yeah. you're new into whiskey, I would not recommend it. Yeah. If you want a enormous nose and a lot of flavor and spice on the palate, then this is a pour that you should check out. Mm -hmm. If that sort of stuff puts you off or sometimes you find pours to be too hot, this is probably an easy pass for you, especially given the price point. But if you see it sitting on the shelf and you do like those things, it's worth considering. It might be worth picking up, giving it a try. Yeah. Speaking of liking things, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. And while you're there, just hit the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. And that's going to do it for this time. Till next time. Cheers. Cheers. Welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And welcome to the channel. Sorry, I, messed, I started to talk. Oh. <laughs> welcome to Stuff and Whiskey. I'm Josh. And I'm Erin. And, and this is... <laughs> I'm you, so used to coming you, in. No. Do you want to say No, you go. Okay.